So can we talk about technology for a minute? I mean, the reason you have been able to create this complete database is because you've had the technology yeah. to do it. We did approach things in a slightly different way. Instead of looking for individual people and tracing their ancestry, yeah. we approach this, as I said, as a data mining operation. For example, one thing we did, we computerized entire censuses. We were not tracing the ancestry of individual people that sort of appeared as a side effect of going through the entire mountain of data. It's in very fragile condition, and for our purposes today, I thought this would be useful. Data mining of aggregated records opens up a number of questions around ownership and privacy, especially for people who are simply pursuing their personal family histories. Right there beside where the cheese factory would have been. Mm -hmm. Should people be concerned about the privacy of the genealogical records that they upload to various sites? I upload uh, material uh, to Ancestry, but I've got the setting that it's private, uh, not seen by, by others. Um, I'm hoping it's kept private. There's a file with all the pictures of the gravestones. I ask Ron if he's confident that files and images are deleted when requested. Obviously, if I don't have a subscription with them anymore, and uh, I've deleted my tree, uh, I'm hoping that it's deleted. But the fine print on any genealogy or DNA site, which few people ever read, reveals a much more complex relationship between users and their donated information. Ownership of genealogy data is at best a gray area. And it depends really on what you're talking about. The data itself, the, what we call the phone book for the dead, <laughs> the, uh, the birth dates and names and places, that's public information for the most part in, in, in the United States. But when a company goes in and adds value by aggregating a lot of data and then combining it with a retrieval system, that aggregated information, just like a phone book, becomes copyrightable. Who owns the information depends on the type of record, but record custodians, obviously, are the original owners of those records. I've spoken with everybody. I said, did you know my father's church? Nobody knew. As soon as you donate that in a public forum, well, it pretty much becomes public. My father never, ever gave any hint of anything in his, of his background, of his Jewish background, my grandmother either. He never came to church with us. So if you want your family tree to stay just the way it is and, and you remember it, then you might not want to share it too freely with the internet the way it is today. My online family tree, I think, yeah, they could probably do what they want with it, except I think there's protection for living, living people. I think uh, they kind of scrub out the living uh, relatives. But as far as I know, as soon as someone is deceased, their own personal privacy is no longer a human right, I guess you would say. And so I'm not sure there's any movement or any effort to try to protect any records that pertain to uh, people who are no longer living.